back at it again and as i said earlier in the fetterman oz video we're gonna check out some herschel walker in the name of fairness because of course everyone on the left i know is going to criticize herschel walker right and you know his his or has criticized herschel walker and talked about his cognitive abilities um so in the name of fairness we're, we're gonna check out some herschel walker because like i said earlier i think it's selfish that the left wants to push continually push out uh fetterman i think he needs to be focusing on resting and recovering um i think that's clear but the left would argue i think it's clear that herschel walker isn't fit so let's um hear a speech from herschel and see if we agree i doubt it but let's find out so that's what we're going to be checking out today like share comment hit that subscribe button if you're new if you would like to follow me on social media, which I highly encourage you to, all of those links are down below in the description box, Instagram, Twitter, Truth Social, Discord server, all of that good stuff is down below. All right. And with that being said, let's dive in. Hey, thank you. You know, before any speech, I always, always got to acknowledge my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he said, if you don't acknowledge him, He's not going to acknowledge you. And I also want to introduce and acknowledge my wife, Julie, because she's in this, this, this race with me. And Senator Marshall, I want to thank you so much for coming all the way from Kansas. And I also want to acknowledge all our local uh, officials, elected officials as well, and thank them for being here as well. And, you know, I always start out, and I've always been saying I want to get rid of this speech sometime, but I've been saying it all the time. And it always starts out about this man that died early in life. He died early in life, and as he got to Saint, got to heaven, St. Peter met him at the pearly gates. And St. Peter says, sir, you're here a little bit early right now, so your name ain't on the road. Yes, and he said, but uh, what I'm going to do, you're going to be the only one in history that's going to get an opportunity to decide where you want to go. I'm going to take you to heaven and I'm going to take you to hell. You get to decide what you want to do. So he puts him in his elevator and he takes him all the way down to hell. And there's a party going on. There's people having a good time. And his friends are down there. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, you ready to go? You ready to go? And he said, well, uh, I got to leave now. He said, yes, you got to make a decision. So he puts him in his elevator, sends him all the way up to heaven. They get to heaven, there are people floating around on clouds. They're having a good time. They're just talking. And after a couple of, si a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up? And the guy said, well, St. Pete, I hate to tell you this. Uh-oh. I think I want to go to hell. Oh, man. Oh, man. Goodness gracious. How did, how did I know that story was going to go that way? <laughs> I feel like a good story couldn't have gone any other way, right? Like, a good story, he had to say that, you know what I mean? It was just too, it was too obvious that you would say heaven, you know what I mean? Like, come on, of course, like, heaven is the correct choice, but, you know, you got, got, to, got to make something good out of it, so let, let, let's see where it goes. So that seemed like my type of place, I want to go to hell. St. Peter said, you sure? He said, yeah. So St. Peter puts him in his elevator, sends him all the way back down to hell. Now the doors open up. It's hot. Mm, yeah. People are crying. They're, they're miserable. Right. And all of a sudden, the guy goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of hours ago, when I was here, there was a party going on. And Satan shows up and said, a couple of hours ago, I was campaigning. <laughs> and the reason I'm telling you this is people have been asking me all the time why I decided to run. And I said, the reason I decided to run, because I see a lot of people campaigning. They're campaigning in front of my family. Holy. Wow. I, I didn't expect the story to go that way. And he's 100% correct. Because these folks on the left, they make the hell that they want us to live in seem like sunshine and rainbows oh yeah we're gonna go to clean energy we're going to we're going to stop the, the the use of these horrible fuel sources blah 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 we're gonna we're gonna be releasing folks 
from from prison who who need to be out it's going to be fantastic we're going to allow these wonderful people to come through our open borders it's going to be so good they're just campaigning eventually you're gonna to have to face reality and that guy had to face reality mm. i'm gonna to have to steal that story that's that's a that's a beautiful story i'm sorry herschel take it away take and all away. of you and my family they're campaigning telling you that this is the new normal mm. i'm telling you this not the new normal mm. what is happening right now is not right Backs. and we have a good god and our God has said that you don't need politicians right now. You need warriors. Oof. And I say I'm one of those warriors because I'm going to tell you the reason why. You know, I'm from this, this little town called Wrightsville, Georgia. And as God got me up, my mom said I was big bone. You know what that meant? That I was fat. <laughs> is, is, is big bone the thing that like white families say? And I don't mean to, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to sound like weird or nothing, but I know I've heard a lot of black families say big bone. Oh, oh yeah, she just big bone or, oh yeah, he just big bone. No, you fat. <laughs> Let's keep it 100. <laughs> oh no, but I, I've, I've heard that said. Oh man, so many times amongst black folks. I I just want to know if, if if that's a thing in white families. <laughs> Big bone. <laughs> no darn well that 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 boy just fat. <laughs> and then I used to have a speech impediment where I couldn't put a sentence together. Mm. But because of the grace of God, didn't know that God got me up to go to the University of Georgia. And then no 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 no. And then I got a didn't chance. I got a chance to win a Heisman Trophy. And then I got a chance to go to the 1992 Olympic team. And then I got a chance to play 15 years of pro ball. But then all of a sudden, let me tell you this, sometimes God got to break you to build you back. Because what happened to me is something happened. I'll tell you, I never drank before in my life. Never tasted beer. Never had any alcohol. Never had any drugs in my system. Don't even take medicine. All of a sudden, I realized that somebody told me I had a mental problem. I go, mental problem? How in the world can Herschel Walker have a mental problem? I'm talking about myself in third person, but I know that. And all of a sudden, I had to go to this hospital. So that's when I said, God had to break you to build you back. Because then he washed me in the blood of Jesus. Because that's when, that's when I came back up. Because he said, he need a warrior. Because I'm getting ready to go against a wolf in sheep clothing. That's what I'm getting ready to go against. This man here that I'm going against try to separate my family. Because I don't know if you've seen what he said. He said, America need to apologize for its whiteness. And I said, well, America has apologized for its whiteness. But what we've done now is we're trying to get a vote and take you down in that elevator to fool you. Because what is happening to us is you've forgotten about the people that elected you to go to office. Because what has happened is we got to come together. Because in my Bible that I read, a house divided cannot stand. And what we're doing right now, we're dividing our home. And the reason we're dividing our home because they're telling you this is the new normal. And I'm telling you, don't let them take you in that elevator. Don't let them get you in that elevator. I hope y'all saw Friday night. I had him on his, I had him on his heels. They asked him a question. They were asking him a question. He became Scooby Doo. We were like, they said, where do you live? He was like, oh, no. And I said, you can't do that. It's time for you to speak. I Ooh. told him it's time for you to speak. Don't run now. Mm -hmm. You can't run now. Yes, I told him I was his country boy, but he don't know a country boy is smarter than you think. Yes, Call me what you want. Do to me what you want. But what you will not do is separate my family. Because mm. I said, I'm going to tell you, 23 and me has screwed us all up. We don't know what we are, but we don't care. One thing I do know we are, we're Americans. We're Americans, and the only way we can get this done is by coming together to get it done. And then what they try to do, they try to fool us. They took away our energy. And he trying to say, Putin did it. Putin didn't do that. He did it. As soon as he got into office, he decided to get rid of our energy and give it to someone else. And now he's saying Putin did it, and it's the gas people. It's not him. It's him. He's the one that signed the document. 
So let me tell you the truth. The truth is, by him giving up our energy, we're getting ourselves in a national security problem. Because there's people that really don't like us. Do you know there's people that don't like us? That's like Russia, Iran, China. They don't like us. Why are we going to people like uh, Venezuela to ask for uh, stuff from? That's a dictator. Do you not know the def definition of a dictator? Yeah, you don't know the definition of a woman because they've been asking that question. And I can tell you, a woman is written in the Bible. Why don't we don't know that? And then they say, can a man get pregnant? No, a man can't get pregnant. Why are we discussing things like that? What we need to do be discussing, we need to be discussing this inflation. What we need to be discussing is a crime on the street. But yet what he's trying to do is fool us and take us down in that elevator. And I'm saying, don't get in that elevator. This not the new normal. This is not the new normal. What is happening right now, we got to get leaders in Washington. We got to get warriors in Washington. So why do you think God has built me up? He didn't build me up just to play football. He built me up for a time like this right here. And I said, that's the reason I'm ready okay. for a time like this right here. Because okay. you need a warrior to go to Washington and say, no, no, no. I love my family. Do we have problems? Yes, we have problems, but we solve those problems together. And then let's talk about this. Whoever thought of defund the police? Defund the police? Are you serious? Why didn't somebody say that's a dumb idea? Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's not politically correct, but I'm not a politician. That's a stupid idea. So that's what I want to say. That is a bad idea. You don't defund the police. Those are the people that keep you safe. Right now, this is the toughest time to be a lawyer for law enforcement. But the guy I'm running against, he called them names. He called them names. He called them bullies and thugs. He called them names. I just read, somebody told me, he said that he got more police. He's behind the police better than I am. No, he's not. Do y'all see my badge? I introduced that there. Uh, at the, yeah. And then they're trying to tell me that's one of Mickey Mouse badge. I said, that one of Mickey Mouse badge, that's the reason that yeah, the morale in our police department is down. That's the reason the recruitment is down because y'all don't have the respect for the police that you should have. That's the reason you need to be out of Washington because we got to support our Back. police like they support you. Because when they get a call, they don't hear nothing about no color nobody when they get the call. They just go to the call. Right now, they're amb ambushing our law enforcement. What do we get when you can ambush my law enforcement? No, you can't. Not on my watch. So we need leaders in Washington say, it's not going to happen on my watch. And then let's go to this here. Let's go to this here because I'm upset right now. All of a sudden, I start to see they want to bring but wokeness in my military, wokeness in your military pronouns. What in the world is a pronoun? I don't know what a pronoun is. I guarantee you all that wokeness and all this extra stuff is going to go right out the flipping window as soon as them things start flying. Because ain't none of that stuff going to matter. Not a single one. Ain't nobody going to be mad because you uh, 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 said the wrong thing. Or address them the wrong way when projectiles are flying through the air. Ain't nobody going to care. And the ones that do, they ain't going to be here to, you know, ask any more questions about it. War is war, right? I'm just saying. Bringing pronouns, I can tell you Iran, Russia, not talking about pronouns. <clears throat> not talking about how you identify. I can tell you that right now. They're talking about war. He's saying, how do you identify? The guy I'm running against even voted that a doctor can do transition surgery in the military. Why he's not talking about doing push-ups and sit-ups, getting my men and women ready? Because they sold us, you know, there's peace through strength. And right now what they're trying to do is get rid of our strength by hurting our military, but not on my watch. Not on my watch. I'm going to support our United States military because they're the greatest fighting force ever assembled is our United States military. So we got to get behind them and support them. That's what we got to do. Let's stand up and quit bowing down to what they're telling us to do. And I told them, I said, Senator, why not get off your back? and stand up straight so they can quit riding your bike. You don't know, you can't let people ride your bike because you seem to be voting everything they tell you to do. And if you don't know what you're doing, give me the job. And they put me in the game, coach. I would do it because all put of me a sudden, in the game. Put me in the game, coach. <laughs> Shout out to all my former sports players and current sports players. Put us in the game, coach. He Hello? wouldn't even answer a question at the debate. They were asking him his name. He didn't even know what his name was. And then he blamed me. You saw him when he said, oh, they said, what you do with that eviction? He blamed me about it. I didn't even know about it. But yet he's making all the money and he's evicting people that only owe him 20-something dollars. 
And he said, Herschel did it. I said, I didn't do it. Then he got so confused, he blamed one of the greatest leaders ever. He brought in Dr. King's name in. I said, Dr. King got nothing to do with this, sir. It is time for you to stand up and be counted. Take responsibility. A leader take responsibility. He wouldn't even take responsibility. Well, I take responsibility. If I do something wrong, I'm going to tell you I did it wrong, but I will try to correct it. And that's what a leader does. A leader just don't make Facts. excuses. Facts. And they ask me. Facts. I'm glad he said that. Nobody is perfect, right? Not a single soul. But the goal should always be to improve. It should be to improve. Address what it is that you did wrong and move on from it. Don't sit here and try to deny it and skirt around it. Come on, man. That's facts. Shout out to Herschel for that. Am I ready to run? I'm ready to run today. And I'm sick and tired of this. It is time right now that we come together. Yeah. And then they got trying to get smart on us. They trying to get smart on us because we're a little bit too old. We are a little bit too old. So what they decide to do, they're going to go to your kids. Right now, they're going to your kids. They're going into the school system. Facts. They're telling your kids because of the color of their skin, their oppressor. They're telling the black kids that you're victim. Well, I want to teach you all the kids you're victorious. You can do what you want to do in the United States of America. We got to get nice. that together. You can do what you want to do in the United States of America, the greatest country in the world today. But because of the leader we put in Washington, they've forgotten about it. Well, I haven't forgotten about it. And then let's go to this, that border. Remember, we had a vice president that said that this border is secured. Have y'all seen the border? Have y'all seen the border? Let me tell you, we are, we are a country of immigrants, but we also are a country of laws. And we have laws. Facts. And now I'm saying, I'm not Very saying true. I'm not compassionate, but you got to come into this country legally. We have laws on the books, but we've elected people to office that have forgotten about that. Well, let me tell you what, if a law is not good for one, it's not good for anyone. So right now we got to get people in Washington that's going to fight for you because you put them in office. So this come November, it's up to you guys. And don't let them take you down in that elevator. Because I'm telling you right now, they've been saying things about me I didn't know I've done yet. I didn't know I've done yet. But they've been good ones. They've been good ones. But I can tell you this, Herschel Walker will fight for you when you get to Washington. And I heard my office lineman used to tell me this. They said, Herschel, do you follow me? I'll take you to the promised land. There you go. So I'm going to tell y'all, y'all vote for me. We will all get to the promised land because I will fight for you. And that's what we got to do. It is time. It is time that we stand up together and get this corrected. You know, I told you I'm not a politician. I don't look like one, don't sound like one because I'm not one, but I am that warrior. I'm that warrior that God has molded and he got me ready and I'm ready. So I said, I will go to Washington, I will fight. And I said, where's well, time that we get this together? We cannot continue to do what we're doing. He's asking for six more years, six more years and less than two, you see where we're at. The grocery price, the gas price, our border wide open. This economy is terrible. You see what they're doing to us. Are we going to not let them do it anymore? It's time for it to stop. It is time for it to stop. And the only way we can stop it is we got to get to the polls. And I said, if you got a friend, tell 10 of your friends to go to the polls and vote. If you don't have any friends, make a friend. Tell them to go to the polls and vote. That's what we got to do right now. This is a serious time. This is a serious time. Early voting started Monday. And he voted Monday. And because sometimes I think he got some decency in him, I think he voted for me. I think he voted for me. Because he know I'm the best man for the job. After he got beat up, after he finished that debate, as he finished that debate, I can tell he was going to vote for me. But his donors were probably telling him something else. And I'm going to tell you this here. If he can't hold his oath to the ultimate father, how do you think he's going to hold the oath for you? And you got to see, you got to realize that. If he can't hold his oath to the ultimate father, you think he's going to hold it for you? And then I'll tell you this, guys. That's the reason I was created. And for that warrior, God had to mold me. And I'm ready. I want to just thank you guys again. And know this. We can get this done together. I don't want to end you with this here. Or well, sometimes we think something is better somewhere else. I'm telling you it's not. 
Don't let them take you down in the elevator. Please don't let them take you down in the elevator. And I tell this little story about this cow. This bull was out in the field with six cows. Three of them was expecting calves. And all this bull had to do was eat grass. That's all he had to do was eat grass. But he kept his nose up against the fence. Looking at three of the cows on the hillside in the other field that didn't belong to him. So he worried about something else. So one day he decided, I'm going to jump this fence. I'm going to jump this fence and I'm going to get over there. And that day came where he got back at a certain distance and he took off running and he dove and dove over that fence and his belly got cut up all under the bottom, but he rolled over on the other side and he was so excited. And he ran up to the top of the hill, but when he got up there, he realized that they were bulls too. So I'm here to tell there was going to be some kind of twist <laughs> oh look 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 at those beautiful ladies hold on wait a minute oh we here i come girl here i come hold on hold on wait wait a minute y'all got <laughs> hold on i see a twig and berries no i thought y'all was man <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't think that something is better somewhere else. This is our United States flag, and we need to support that because let me tell you, I remember hearing this story about Francis Scott Key that he went over to these uh, he went over to these the, to the British ships when they had the colonists. He went over. Oh yeah, we checked we checked out that story. Oh man. This is probably like a month and a half, two months ago now, where people knew that they were done for, but they went and grabbed the flag anyway and held it up until, you know, ultimately they were put in the pine box and then another person ran up, grabbed it, held it up. Incredible story. Absolutely incredible story. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. Um, it's right here on the channel. I couldn't tell you exactly what I named that video, though. Um, but it... it it definitely gives you a deeper appreciation um, for all of this. I mean, it, it's an absolutely incredible story. To the British ship to swap prisoners Man. with the British captain because they had some of the colonists prisoners and then we had some of theirs. So he went over to swap and all of a sudden when he got over to the ships, the British captain decided to change the negotiation. And this is a true story. He decided to change the negotiation. He said, well, we're not going to swap prisoners with you right now. But what we want you to do is to lower your flag. This was what became our United States flag. And Mr. Ski said, well, sir, uh, I'm not sure if we can do that. So the British captain said, if you don't lower your flag, we got enough weapons out on this water, we would take that flag down. So sometimes you hear the Come national anthem and you hear them talk about the red glare in the air. What they're talking about is the British ship firing at our flag to take it down and stuff. But all of a sudden you hear at the end of that national anthem that said when everything cleared and daylight came, that flag was still there. And do you know why that flag stayed there? That flag stayed there because every time that flag got ready to hit the ground, a dead patriot laid against it to hold it up. To keep us to have the freedoms and the liberties we have. And now it's time for us to sacrifice for so many people that have sacrificed for us. We have a next generation that's coming. We have a next generation that's coming. And I said, they are not going to take the America's dream from my family. They are not going to take the America's dream from my kids. So now it is time for us to get out and do your part. God bless. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. What an incredible speech there from Herschel Walker. Now, obviously, there, there were some stumbles. If, if we're going to be 100, if we're going to call a spade a spade, were there some stumbles in, you know, a little bit of mumbling here or there? Yeah, sure. But I don't think that's anything, you know, crazy. I'm sure some of it is the accent. Obviously, he said when he was young, he did have a speech impediment. 
I don't think that that was anything crazy though. Like, it, I, I, I'm just acknowledging the fact that, yeah, there was like a tiny hint of something there. But, you know, a lot of these folks on the left, oh man, this this guy, oh, he's, he's just not there. He's just not there. And like, you, you, you compare that speech to a Joe speech. I mean, it's like night and day, night and day. I, I can sit here and listen to, 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 to Walker speak. Joe, I mean, come on. Like, who, who's sitting there listening to those speeches? I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. I'm not. And I check out this stuff on a daily basis. I listen to Herschel speak, though, especially with them great stories. My goodness. Amazing stories. Story of the elevator. Politicians making hell seem like sunshine and rainbows when it really isn't. The bull story. Thought he saw these wonderful cows off, off in the distance on top of the hill. He went to go get them and found out, oh, nope, you got twig and berries. No, I got to turn back around now. <laughs> you know, but as always, y'all let me know what y'all thought about it in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, hit that subscribe button before you go. Do y'all think this was, um, do y'all think he's fit for office? Talk to me. Peace and love. I'm out.